how are you uh, in, in this <laughs> pandemic time? Uh, I see that uh, Mr. Winkler shaved the beard off uh, yeah. that, you, that you had. Uh, so My son said, my, my youngest son, Max, he said, Dad, uh, are you going to shave that beard? What are you going to shave that beard? <laughs> hey, Dad, you know, do you ever think about shaving that beard? I shaved it off. He said, okay, you look 20 years younger. And then walked out of the room. Oh. I don't know how much collaborating you guys have done during this this pandemic kind of time, but has that changed your kind of collaborative process? Uh, just doing everything kind of, I don't know if you do everything through Zoom or through video chats or not, but but has that, have, has your process changed? When we write, when we write novels together, we mm -hmm. have always written in person. Henry comes to my office and we're about three feet apart. So, um, and it's very much a collaborative process where we're both kind of talking and working at the same time. So now during the pandemic, uh, we, uh, our productivity has been gr greatly reduced. Would you say, Henry? <laughs> I would. As a matter of fact, we're going to find out. We're going to have this same conversation in two Saturdays because we're going to find out. We're getting back to work. We have two projects to write together. One, uh, the third, um, Alien Superstar. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the third version, and then we created a brand new look, a Series. brand new book mm -hmm. uh, oh, for nice. younger, younger kids. Uh, that will be so much fun to write. And we're gonna figure out, we thought we'll write one week at Lynn's house, one week at my house, maybe some on Zoom, maybe just a few days at Lynn's house, a few days at my house, the other days on Zoom. We haven't figured it out yet. Writing these must kind of be a source of inspiration for you, for both of you too, and not just during these weird times. So uh, how uh, has, has, has that changed? You know, has it been more even kind of cathartic to dive into these while, while we're going through what we're going through? That's an interesting question. We have just experienced a, uh, a book tour virtually. Usually Lynn and I are on a plane uh, to at least three or four cities. Um, we go into schools, we go into, um, you know, local bookstores. Um, we, we talk to the children, we're there, we hold their faces. And this has been so different. And yet, uh, it, it has not slowed our rhythm. We're, we're funny together. We, um, we, you know, uh, are improvisational together. And for me, I am so proud of what we accomplish. I think one of the things that's really important to us in our books is to make sure they're entertaining. You know, we write comedy first and foremost. And I think in these times, kids have, they have a lot on their minds. You know, none of us really knows how, what they're thinking during this weird time. It must be worrisome. And, they, and so, so it makes our writing process even more important to us. If we can bring a little lightness, a little humor, a little joy, that's a nice thing. And sort of take them, take them out of, you know, let them escape what the public dialogue, which is, which is worrisome and kind of fraught and have a good time. So in a way it's motivated us more because we think it, it really has an important place in kids' lives. Yeah, Lynn always says that we want to be the book that is not assigned, that children pull out of their backpack when they want to entertain themselves, when they, mm -hmm. uh, when they need a good laugh. And I will tell you, consistently from the year 2003 until today, one of the most consistent uh, comments that we get from children either live or in the mail is how did you know me so well mm. and i laughed so hard my funny bone fell out of my body i don't think you can ask for two better compliments than that they're not said exactly like that but they are said with the exact meaning of what i just said mm. and it's consistent for each of you, what was that book when you were kids? Uh, what, what was the thing that kind of drew you into the written word? I was a reader and Henry was not a reader. So for me, 
what I loved was I really loved series books like mm. like uh, like the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew and the, the Wizard of Oz books and I think kids like that too when we wrote our first series the Hank Zipser series and and now with Alien Superstar kids like to feel comfortable with a group of characters it's like their friends it's their it's their book friends so I was always drawn to once I started reading one of a series or one book by an author, I stayed with it. Henry, what about you? Let's start. I, I still have the Hardy Boys mm. on the bookshelf in my hallway. <laughs> I never read a page. I wanted to read them. Everybody was talking about them. I wanted to read A Tale of Two Cities. I never read it. I wanted to read Ivanhoe. I never read it. <laughs> You're okay on that one. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I, I thought, oh, my gosh, I want to do what everybody else is doing. And my brain and my eyes were never friends. Mm. They, would, uh, they would bully each other on the uh, playground. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I think that's... That we can talk a little bit about the, uh, dyslexia and what, um, how you found out about it, and and how you, th how do you think your your books um, address it? Do they do they address it at all for for um, for the kids that read them? Well, I will just say to start that off, we don't write down to the children. Mm. We tell the truth, and the more truth you tell, the more compelling it is for the reader because they identify. We believe every child has some sort of challenge, a social challenge, a sport challenge, a math challenge, uh, a dance challenge, whatever it is. What we found out, and I'm telling you, it was just uh, like last November, a year ago, we were finishing the this um, Alien Superstar and it, all of a sudden it, it struck us. We write about the kid looking in, wanting to be on the inside and always feeling like an outsider, a stranger in a strange land. So we did, we wrote that. An alien in a very strange land, Hollywood. Let's ask about Alien Superstar. It has a lot of Hollywood in it. Um, it has a lot of heart and avocados. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> the, and the, the industry is kind of down right now for many reasons, some um, COVID and, and things of, of that nature. Um, it, how do you think that the industry is going to recover from what's going on now? And then that's both in the real world and let's just for fun say in, in, in you know, Buddy Burgers Hollywood, how would they, how would they uh, get back to being normal um, and, and get back to having, you know, a, a sense of, um, of, of work even you know it's an interesting thing i have a lot of friends I, I i run an organization called the society of children's book writers and illustrators and it's it's an organization of twenty seven thousand people who write and illustrate for kids so i talk to a lot of children's writers and a lot of people are having trouble writing about the world of kids the real world of kids because they're saying mm -hmm. are they in school are they in pods after school what you know what what we consider sort of the classic children's book, which are uh, dramas and comedies often set in school because school is such a big part. Who really knows? So in a way, we're, we're lucky that Alien Superstar is set. It's about a, 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 an alien and also the alien's friends who work on a soundstage. So their life is probably less affected than, than the normal kids who are suddenly sitting in their bedrooms on a computer screen trying to interact with their friends or, or exercise over Zoom. So, um, so our our day-to-day -day work in terms of writing Buddy Burger isn't that changed from, from the pandemic, but plenty of other writers who write realistic fiction for kids are trying to figure it out. You know, and, and Hollywood is trying to come back. Uh, Tyler Perry did it best in Atlanta. He bought this complex where he... Um, quarantined everybody, the crew, the actors. It was like uh, the basketball season. They did best in their bubble. But, you know, there are like a hundred pages of rules 
I, uh, I do a wonderful show called Barry. We were at the table reading March 19th, went home March 20th, have been here ever since. We were supposed to start in July, September, November, and now uh, February. And I just heard that maybe we're going to start next October. So it is heartbreaking. It is, you've got to uh, dig deep. And I just want to say vaccine. Nothing is going to change until there is a credible, reliable, trusted vaccine. Okay. Well, thank you both uh, very much for your time. And I know you, um, and, and thank you very much for Alien Superstar. I actually got it for my uh, goddaughter. Uh, oh, that's wonderful. It's, yeah, she, she, she's starting it and she loves it. And she's Zooming uh, in class as well. So uh, yeah, it's very great. Well, the um, next time yeah. we talk, we should Zoom with her. <laughs> I will, uh, I'll let her know, I'll let her dad know. Um, and thank you very much for uh, participating in the Festival of Books as well. Thank you for asking.